The Way of Tomorrow my wife and I have been married 20 years we are in our late 30s. Short story she had an affair with a co-worker 10 years ago. Shortly after the affair started, she admitted to me what happened. Basically, the guy was a lot older than us, not good in bed, drug addicted, bipolar and my wife figured him out after he was caught in the parking lot at work with a prostitute. Then there is me successful wealth and not bad looking. He swept my wife off her feet by telling her how much better she was than his wife and how lame I was. We were both young and dumb. Since then, we have had years of counseling and the best life I could imagine basically we are inseparable now. I had not even thought of the affair in quite some time, I went to get my truck serviced and noticed the idiot was the serviceman. He did not recognize me at first, so I left him a stupid note about what a real loser he is and how great our life is since he showed my wife what believing an idiot leads to. I get home, tell my wife first thing who I saw and how close she came to screwing up her life. Then she starts sending me text about how fortunate she was to keep me and sorry she is about what she had done. That night she initiated some really good bonding. After the bonding I felt relieved and relaxed about the situation. Is all this normal after 10 years of an affair? Will I have a breakdown if triggered like this in the future? It kind of opened up a can of worms I thought was long gone. Hers was more of an emotional affair. Remembering back with our counseling that's how a male sees an affair. For her it was attention she was getting and his stupid lying. I blame it on both of our innocence. In marriages you go through slumps. Neither of us realized people are out there ready to pounce. I lost a lot of faith in humanity during that time. I became wealthy at a young age, quickly while we were dating. When I got married, I had lawyers help me with that situation. She didn't marry me for the money because she didn't realize I had it. I did have a prenuptial. From what I understand from multiple lawyers if she cheats, she gets nothing but a few house I could care less about. If I cheat it's a whole different ball game. After she cheated, I would randomly get Pi to follow her. Only place she went was to her mom's and out with family. After the affair I told her quit work or get out. Did that just get her away from the guy. Her and her mom now volunteer at an organization we created. She enjoys working and I didn't want to isolate her. I figured that would make our situation worse off and make her feel controlled. Also, our relationship is much like it was when we first got together. Our bonding life is awesome after the affair. It sounds almost sick to say that. I will admit I was not a great lover before the affair, more dedicated to my company I had created and was not meeting her emotionally needs. I was never a romantic person. The affair made me work harder to be a better husband. She works harder to be a better wife. I could not imagine life without her. She will send me texts randomly about how thankful she is I didn't divorce her. Visits me at work daily for lunch. Our relationship is a much more mature relationship than we had before. When she knows I'm triggered she tries to make things better. Yesterday I was very upset and yelled at her why. Why would you do this make me feel like this? She knows for me it's about the bonding that bothers me. I struggled with knowing someone else had slept with her. She reminds me it was never about the bonding. It was emotional for her and when it turned physical it made her feel nasty. During MC she told us she would take long showers after their bonding trying wash the feeling away because it turned physical and she never wanted it to go that far. Over the summer we took a road trip down the east coast. It was probably the most amazing time I had ever had in my life. We went through every state made so many great memories. This fall we traveled the entire Blue Ridge Parkway. Times are the best they have been in our entire marriage but I'm still haunted by small voice in my brain. A couple days ago when I was triggered, came home and started my downward spiral she said I wish I could take it all back change history so that day never came. But I told her you were enjoying the moment my heart and life was crumbling before me. At that moment in time, he was your missed soulmate, the love you had always dreamed of. At that moment in time, I was a nuisance holding you from having your one true love. I have tried to use money to buy my happiness. I've purchased multiple homes trying to run from the triggers. We built our dream home in the mountains, my wife told me last year as we were moving in. How great our life was and we could start a new life together. At times I feel like I keep trapping myself deeper so we can't separate. The nightmare of dividing all this up makes me sick. She has apologized to me, written me letters, attempted to make it better and answered every question I have asked her. I'm not miserable with our current relationship. We are not non-physical, she makes me feel desired. I just get triggered at times and want to start this crap up with telling her, see I told you so he was a stupid choice. After the bonding we had over the past week I may just tell her I'm triggered at least once a week. I have a timeline, I'm pretty sure I know everything. When everything was exposed, she answered everything I asked. I made my wife tell his wife. He was so pissed at us for telling his wife. He kept yelling at my wife why would you give him every detail. My wife told him I was her husband if we were going to heal from this, she had to be open to me. He was a serial cheater my wife exploded to his wife how he operated, which made him so pissed. I'm assuming he was taking several women to the same locations. I hired a pie he had about a dozen different women and men he was screwing. Yes men, yes, we got an STD test afterwards we were clean. Since my wife exposing his secret life to his wife he has spiraled out of control. 
Sometimes I think my wife was taken advantage. I know for a fact more than one occasion he gave my wife wine and a Valium, but she drunk the wine and took the pill on her own free will. I still think that's borderline disgusting. He was so pissed because my wife told this. He admitted giving her them but said he didn't force her to take them. Sometimes I feel like my wife ruined me so much I stay just to torture her. I was a good person before her affair, now I have no respect for people. I can't ever really trust another woman again, I feel like I would be so controlling I would do more harm than good in another relationship. I'm controlling now and feel like it actually turns my wife on. We have the best bonding and she treats me like a king. She is always apologizing and showing me that she will not cheat again. I used to never be like this, I tell her I hope she likes what she created. Her affair partner was a narcissist and started controlling her every move. He did not allow her to talk to anyone. The moment I started treating her like that she came crying back. Her father was abusive and I swear she likes it that way. I'm never like this around my children because I would never want them to be or treat someone like this. How does a man control trigger from his wife's affair 10 years ago? A trigger about one time a year from my wife's affair. I had thought I would not have won this year but I ran across her affair partner while out doing errands. We have been through years of PC and MC. At this time, we are more in love than we have ever been in our relationship. We are like teenagers again when teens are in that first relationship. We are older and wiser. We have not rug swept the affair we talk about it in ways we can prevent them in the future. With counseling my wife has realized her problems come from being deserted by her father. I don't want anyone to bash her, she has put in a great amount of work to fix her problems and our marriage. We are open to ideas and other stories on how you are able to cope with seasonal triggers. Why would a woman downgrade? My wife had an affair with a poor unattractive older man and he has a horrible attitude. She even described him as a homeless hippie. She described the affair as stupid and had nothing to do with me. When I confronted the guy, I struggled to be angry because he is so ugly. As a man naturally I thought he must be good in bed, she has assured me that was not the case either. Her and my PC thinks it's to do with her not having a father figure and not understanding the role of healthy men. Comment. Cheaters downgrade themselves when they cheat or just cheat with someone they know is already married or in a relationship. In my opinion they have both downgraded because they have both committed adultery and traded their family for a role in the hay. They both traded down. You have to think that cheaters aren't stupid. They know what their family is worth to them. They know what they are getting into. They know but ignore that if they get caught their spouse and their kids are going to suffer terribly. They know their rep will be shot. In their mind the downgrade they pick is worth the spouse and family they are risking. The affair is 100% on them. However, things have turned out, your wife's boyfriend was worth more than you and your family. And she made that same decision over and over. OP responds. I'm not leaving my wife, you can say whatever you want I don't care. Ten years of counseling has exposed that my wife was struggling with her father abandoning her as a toddler and then being molested by her stepdad. She is the mother of my children and I love coming home to them. I did not like the affair and don't like the triggers I get from time to time. My wife begged me to stay to help her. We both committed to reconciliation. I would be no better than her if I walked out at this point in her life. We have had to work through her bonding issue and came out on top. At this point of her healing process, it would devastate her. Yes, she has hurt me but I have accepted she was broken. I have children and wealth I have to protect myself. I was not going to let her walk out on me with my kids and pay her alimony. I was preparing for a custody battle and whatever else he would have talked her into. You try to paint me into a bad guy. I think any rational person in my situation would have done the same thing. As for putting her through hell, the folks on here told me to do it 10 years ago. They walked me through the whole process when I made a post, I think my wife is cheating. I was told to get a tracking on her. I caught her then I was told to do a 180, I did. She wanted the R, I told her to write him a no contact letter, she did. In the no contact letter, which was recommended by this forum, she put in the reason why he was a fraud and was no longer wanting a relationship with him. She mailed it to him his wife read it. His wife called me and my wife, I felt like I had to tell her what I had found on him. Also ask her to read this last night. She told me at the time she felt like he was an upgrade because he was lying to her and she enjoyed that. He was older and giving her attention, she liked that. He was promising her a life, she knew he could not provide, she liked that. She also says before her and I dated she dated older men that would hurt her emotionally. Looking back, she says she was sick and had issues. When she was 16, she dated a 45-year-old married man. She says looking back this was sickening and was destroying her life. Luckily through years of PC she has been able to confront her issues and understand why she had such an unhealthy problem. She says if I would have just left her in D, she would have never got the help she needs to be the person she is today. As a result of our hard work, she says she is able to enjoy life like she has never been able to. Before what our MC called her healing process from X, she was never able to enjoy bonding. Bonding was more a survival skill for her. Since her healing journey our bonding life is incredible, she was never able to enjoy bonding. So emotional connected bonding is enjoyable to her now. She no longer gets a nasty feeling from bonding. 
I actually admire her for all she went through and the hard work she had put in. I think I get hurt when you guys say things because you don't know the work we have put into this marriage and it is better. A long time later, 10 years since my wife cheated and I still get triggered about one time a year, it ruined both our lives. We have a sick love-hate relationship. I was the kindest giving person, now I'm a bitter miserable human. We went to hours and hours of counseling. Read every book we could get our hands on, my wife apologized to me for years, did everything in her power to reconcile our relationship. I actually have a wonderful wife now but I can't stand her. I come home from work some days acting frustrated just to get her to ask me what's wrong so I can tell her what a piece of crap she is. My therapist tells me I have PTSD from it. I had a mental breakdown from it. I would try to reenact the days leading up to her affair so I could stop her. I still give the guy who it was with absolute hell. I'm at a sick point in my life where I have relationships with another woman just to hurt her. I will do some stupid stuff to her like bring her home flowers, if, and go on romantic vacations just to build her up to tear her apart. I make her feel like I have forgiven her then I let her catch me having an affair. I have figured out that emotional affairs hurt her the worst. I will go weeks not touching her or talk to her, I'll make sure she sees how much other woman will talk to me. I will flirt in front of her, it breaks her heart but I love it. My advice to anyone who has recently been cheated on, leave divorce don't go down my miserable road of life. I think the only reason we stay together is money. I started a business when we first married I became very successful. We are set for life now. I work about 4 hours a day and she just shop all day buying whatever she wants. I figured that's why she stayed with me in the first place but it's not. We own 3 homes that we could move into. We could divorce and split everything 50 over 50 and I would be okay. We enjoy each other misery. I fell into her narcissist trap and can't get out. I lost all respect for women and all hope in mankind. I basically just stay with her for bonding. She had a messed up childhood and gets off on sleeping with me after I make her feel like crap. It's like the more abusive and cheat on her the better the bonding is. We have three kids, I try my best to leave them out of this. We have one who she got pregnant with at the time of her affair. I knew she was having an affair so I got her pregnant to cause her even more chaos. I knew the child was my child but I would tell her it was the other's man's. I'm telling you it screwed up my head, brought out a side of me I never knew I had. I wouldn't say I've been like this the entire 10 after the affair, but whatever it's been a little over 10 years. We have been together 20 years. I also think the first 10 years of marriage was wonderful. Is this normal I feel like I was married to my real wife before the affair. In my nutcase mind I don't even look at my wife as the same person. Before the affair I called my wife by her first name now I call her by middle her name. We do talk a lot about what's going on we are very open to one another. The 3-4 to four years after the affair we worked hard rebuilding our marriage. My wife showed true remorse for what she had done. We went to marriage counseling regularly. I'd say what set me off was some years later, she was telling me how she really wished she would have never had the affair and when she described it, I felt like I was her backup guy. I was the real McCoy and this other guy was a fraud, but she liked the fraud's attitude which was what attracted her to him. He was the bad boy and she liked the bad boy. I know for sure it wasn't his dang looks she described the bonding as very very good as in the best she had ever had. I'm very competitive and I could not handle this. I struggled trying to understand how she could enjoy someone who had no life, was a deadbeat and straight up nasty looking, could rock my wife's world like this. This guy was a stranger someone she had just met he was a married man who I later found out from his wife, people who knew him he was regular cheater who had to have multiple girlfriends at all times. This dude's wife would fight you to the death over this guy, she had multiple assault charges from attacking his girlfriends. My wife is attractive, his wife is attractive and I actually knew some of his other affair partners, they were all attractive. I wanted this I was jealous of him. I would think to myself how this dude can be so ugly, jobless and filed for bankruptcy but get all this attention I couldn't get. My wife told me the only reason she stopped seeing him, she figured out she was not going to get anywhere with him in life. She figured out he was a fraud and the stuff he promised her he could never do. I asked for too much detail and she gave me all the details I wanted. We had been married for 10 years at this point our bonding life had dwindled and I was crushed to know she could enjoy sleeping with another man. I wanted great bonding with her I wanted her to be like his wife and fight for me. I wanted to be desired like this man and I knew I had one asset, one tool, an advantage this guy did not have I had money. I make very large deposits of money at my local bank. I was going to make a purchase for an item off Craigslist and need to get some cash. I wrote myself a check but forgot to sign it. The bank teller was new young and very attractive lady. She told me I would have to go back to work and get this signed by the authorized person. I told her I was the owner and could sign the check. She said well I got to check and make sure she went to her boss's office I slid my wedding ring in my pocket and took a deep breath. I remember telling myself you got this and counted 123 go. She got the verification from her boss for me to sign the check and I was the account owner. I then asked if she could give me my account balance. I made sure every deposit I was going to see her. 
During this time, I had been reading a books and watching YouTube videos on narcissist personality disorders. I had become obsessed with and emulated this on that young lady. I had figured out that my wife affair partner used triangulation techniques to turn on his girlfriends and wife. Also, I had a friend who was always sleeping with different women and married. I started asking him questions and hanging around him to see how he was doing this. I just emulated these people and using what I read on my wife. Yes, I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I wanted to see my wife's reaction. The triangulation thing turned her on. She would bang my brains out in the bedroom. It was like I had turned a bonding light switch on for her. I figured out what my wife's bonding trigger was. I don't like being this person. The difference between me and the narcissist is I feel huge amounts of guilt from having an affair. I do not like sleeping with other people than my wife. I feel extremely nasty and disgusting. I don't do this anymore but I do triangulate her with another woman. I'll talk about how attractive I find someone and I'll watch porn which seems to work on her. When we are out, I'll make it a point to flirt in front of her. I'll take conversation too far with her friends to see where I can take it too physically. I guess this is how we are coping with infidelity together and it works for us. It may be different from the normal but it's how we do it. Remember when I said kids are gone to the grandparents, this site was the last thing on my mind. Guess what? We talked about life and all the great times we had together, laughed at some of the crazy stuff we had done together and had a great date night. Don't forget we got 20 years of history together. My trigger level has subsided after this post, talking and some good bonding. Two months later. For me the mind movies of great bonding are the hardest part of my wife's affair to get past. My wife says for her, my emotional connection to another woman is the hardest for her to get past. Wife says bonding was a byproduct of her emotions trying to keep the guy around to have an emotional affair. I've had slept with a woman, which I consider a serious affair and according to my wife a four-year emotional affair with a different woman I met online. My wife seems to not even care I had slept with this woman, but she is really rocked to her core that I would spend four years communicating with this other woman and enjoy talking to her like I did. I would like to talk and text her daily because she is easy to talk to and I feel she genuinely cares about my feelings. I don't see it ever going bonding or have a desire to pursue her physically. I see it more of a mother-son or brother-sister type relationship. My wife is destroyed to learn I have been talking to this woman for four or five years without telling her. For me good bonding with someone else is hard for me to get past. I feel like maybe I'm not good enough in bed or equipped enough to give my wife good bonding. Even though my wife says that's not the case at all and bonding-wise I more than fulfill her needs. We are constantly working on our relationship together and things are really going in a great direction. I'd say I'm the happiest I've been in a very long time. For the people who stayed in a relationship with your cheater what was the hardest part to get over and put behind you? Comment, your wife told you everything you needed to know in those two sentences. You're not going to learn anything more important here. Your wife seems to have learned and moved on. Somehow the two of you moved past that. The possibility of it happening again, this time you, and still remaining married are astronomically slim. Don't tempt fate. Don't try and rationalize that your four to five year online emotional attachment was anything but wrong. Be thankful you were caught before something happened. OP responds, my wife worked with him for a couple of years he never talked to her. She had our son and when she returned from maternity leave, he started filling her head with BS. At this time, I was building my current business. She worked third shift with him. I know she cheated but I blame him she had postpartum depression. He was telling her how good she looked and how good of a father he was. Then I find out from his wife he was a serial cheater. Once I found out my wife confessed everything. He got violent with her at work because she got him discovered. I lost all hope in everyone absolutely everyone. I believe nothing anyone says. I don't even trust my own parents. I actually did have one affair eight years ago that was physical. I did it to show my wife I could have a young good-looking woman if I wanted to. She doesn't even seem to care about the physical affair, but me talking to a woman drives her into depression. My wife seems to be more remorseful the older we get and more open to talking about our marriage. Over the past four months we have really been working on us. This weekend was nothing more than awesome. I would rate the weekend we had as good as our honeymoon 19 years ago. We had a connection you could feel in her communication, eye contact and the way she would kiss me. While I'm at work today she sends me a text I've never been so in love. Weekends like this tend to make it easier to forget about the past and forgiveness a lot easier. My comment, I'm glad they are still together, it seems that they are meant for each other. Story 2. My wife and I have been married for 10 years. Admittedly when we got married, I was not ready to marry her but I caved to her continuous pressure. I did love her and she was pregnant with our first child so I felt somewhat obligated. She also had three children from two previous marriages which deepened my feelings of obligation. I had never been married nor did I have any children. In the first six years of marriage, I wasn't 100% committed and continually thought about leaving but had three children together during that time. The first two children we had together she stopped taking birth to control but didn't tell me which only added to my confusion. The third was just an accident all the way around. 
Nevertheless, I felt somewhat used and trapped but it deepened my internal conflict as I felt I needed to do right by her and all these innocent children that would be impacted by another divorce in her life. Inevitably as you may have guessed my conflicting feelings led to a separation and affair on my part during the three months we were separated. It also caused me to be somewhat checked out in the marriage during the first six years. The separation happened four years ago, but something happened. She pursued me quite strongly during our separation and I sought counseling. I realized that despite all the complicated history I really did love my wife. I told her I wanted to reconcile the marriage, commit 100%, but I also had to tell her about my affair. She was understandably hurt but wanted to reconcile the marriage anyway. The first year was hard but through marriage counseling and individual counseling our marriage became rock solid. We really came together. She forgave me for the past. The last three years have been the best of my life. We just had a second honeymoon three months ago. I have been faithful and committed since. Then out of the blue two months ago she shows up with a new tattoo and says she wants to spread her wings and fly. She says she's not sure she loves me anymore and considering divorce. I pressed her as to why and all she will bring up is my past misdeeds. For two months all I've heard is how much of a dirtbag I am for stepping out. She says she made it too easy on me to come back after infidelity. I feel very conflicted about this. Is she really angry about the past or is she just using it as fuel for some sort of midlife crisis? But whatever she has a new single friend in her life and they seem inseparable and she seems checked out a bit from the kids too, not just me. Half a year later, recently she confessed to an affair. She claims it started recently but I don't believe that crap. She has no intention of cutting it off or trying to save the marriage. So now I want a divorce. I'm not interested in being with this woman whom I do not recognize. Here's the question. We're still living together while we sell the house but she still acts like my wife. Hugging, kissing, etc. I want to feel strong and empowered but keep divorce amicable. Advice. This is her third. Yes, I white knighted and adopted her child. Yes, I know, bad decision on my part. Not the adoption, he's my son and a great kid. Live and learn. We are in the process of divorcing. She has moved out. The details of the divorce are pretty amicable. She just wants out of SAP to pursue an open relationship with the OM went on for six months before I discovered it. I have all the feelings one might imagine with this situation. I wish I could just cut off all contact and move on. I want to just be angry for a while and tell her to go X herself, but we have kids. How do I deal with her, this? I know the kids are most important but I have to balance that with my own mental health and getting my mojo back. We were separated, told her I wanted a divorce and not living together when I had a brief relationship. She talked me into coming back and going to counseling and I disclosed the relationship before agreeing to re-engage in the marriage. She was hurt but we worked through it. Not saying what I did was right but I did not do what she's done. Ever, in the fog of her cheating, she came back with a vengeance about my past relationship, crawling in and out of my bed and his. I did not ever do this to her. I didn't know she was cheating and took her hurt at face value and she convinced me I had an affair. I now have hindsight on the whole thing. That was nothing but an excuse to excuse her own behavior. My comment, this is why you use her love of this guy to your favor. The laws don't really matter. Your lawyer can make this as slow of a process as possible. I've done it. I've taken a month, or three, to answer a question or return a signed document that I could have knocked out in 30 minutes. The more motivated she is to put it all behind her, the better deal you can get. Did you guys like these two short ones? Which one you preferred? Comment down below and I got more for tomorrow.